Okay, so uh, this chapter here, I'm going to go through rather quickly because this is uh, only 5% of the questions that you're likely to see on the exam. This is leadership, administration, and management. It's something that was added in the 27 refresh. Uh, I'm going to talk about leadership, managing external relationships, internal organizational management, and lastly, technology and related applications. These are the recommended resources for this section. Um, the one that I want you to focus on is PAS report. Let's see here, number 582, local planning agency management. If you want to get all of these questions 100%, just take a look at that one PAS report 582. Once again, the local planning agency management, and you're going to nail out, you're going to nail all these questions. So uh, the first thing that we wanted to talk about is the influence decision making is on the public interest. As we know, planners provide data and recommendations that assist decision makers. Once again, in PAS report number 582, it gives a lot of great examples about how planners use data to help in, inform politicians and help make decisions for all of the planning decisions that come forward. Managing external relationships. Um, one thing that uh, we wanna talk about as planners is that how important great customer experience is primarily about delivering the right knowledge to the right place at the right time. Uh, one thing that uh, planners often are could be the face of the agency, the face of municipality. You could be the only interaction that someone in the public has with city hall, coming to the counter and helping them get a permit for a fence permit, for example, or a back patio. So it's always important that you keep customer service very much at the top of your mind. Client interaction. As I talked about, clients, uh, client interaction is extremely important that planners should remember whoever the client is to make sure that we work effect as effectively with them as possible. And that the client may change throughout a project. One time that could be the builders, another time the developers or residents, and then even the elected and appointed officials. And maintaining professionalism and being clear and open through your communication is vital. Representing and promoting organizations. Uh, one thing that planners should also do is represent themselves as an extension of their organization. So for example, if you work at your city, make sure you think of yourself as that you are representing that city and all the people that work there and all the projects and plans that are being done right now. Think about your strong relationships with others, uh, including other taxing districts, other governmental agencies, and also trying to be as transparent as possible. Uh, many, many municipalities, for example, post their information on the websites to help support transparency. This is something that a lot of planning agencies do, either promoting their plans, studies and reports, or even local decisions that are being made. And then lastly, be familiar with the Freedom of Information Act, or FOIA. And of course, that's the law that gives you the right to access information from the government. It's often described as the law that keeps citizens in the know about their government. Team building and staff training. It's important for planners, especially planning managers, to support team building and staff training opportunities. One of the goals of that staff report, or sorry, of the PS report 582, is it helps you put yourself in a position of a planning manager. So you may not be a planning manager now when you take the exam, but a lot of this is to help you think about, okay, if I was planning manager, what's the best way to manage my employees, the best way to give direction, and the best way to make decisions. Planning office culture. Uh, there's even some questions on the exam about this. Um, they want you to think about some of the great places you've worked. Why were they work? What was the culture? What are some places that weren't so fun to work at or you weren't as productive? What was that office culture like? And that they want to stress that office culture can impact the success or failure of a company or, de or department. How to create an office culture that rocks. This is just some five fun steps here from Amanda. Del Festro, uh, hold frequent community meetings, keep employees engaged, plan company events, make sure to thank your employees for their hard work, and then finally support and create rules in the workplace. Strategic planning. I think actually Devin and John have also touched upon this in their presentations. Just think about how important strategic planning is, especially I think if you're a new manager, either coming into an organization, there might be a change of leadership, or it just might be tied to your annual uh, budget. A strategic plan can really help you identify your goals and your priorities for the upcoming year. 
be familiar with the budgeting and financial aspects of being a manager, understanding how the budget works, uh, understanding revenue, your sources of income, also your forecasting, and then the types of different budgeting that exist, the PPP BS, uh, the planning program and budgeting systems, management by objective, zero base budget. That's an easy one to remember because essentially your budget starts from zero at the beginning of every year or period of uh, the budget. PERT, which is a program evaluation or review technique. And finally, a Gantt chart. Be familiar with all of these budgeting techniques and um, you will do just fine on this section. Uh, to conclude this section here, we talk about technology and related applications. This is something that the APA has added. They just want us to be familiar with smart cities technology. Once again, you don't have to be an expert on this. You don't need to get into the details, but be familiar with what a smart city is, why it's important to you as a planner, what are some different tools or techniques or technology that you can use in your own community to help support smart cities technology. This slide here, highlight some of the key things to keep in mind when advancing planning with smart technology, the importance of data, the importance of open data, fiber networks, broadband, technology and public outreach, uh, autonomous vehicles. And then for example, here, street light management. This uh, illustration, although it's small, talks about street lights that only turn on when it senses movement, trying to save electricity. Parking lot management, what are some new technology sources? to help find parking, to help manage parking or direct people to available parking. And of course, integrated multimodal transportation. We've got a picture here of the Divi system in Chicago, which is the shared bike program. And then a fun picture here of the connection of the future of the home. I think one thing during the pandemic we've all learned is how important these technologies are to us. Um, I've got two children at home right now who are learning uh, e-learning from school. And we've really learned how important uh, Wi-Fi, broadband, and all the technologies in our home are uh, over the last year. With that, I'm going to turn it over to Devin uh, to talk about the Code of Ethics and Professional Conduct. 